I really hate the smell of pizza. That is all I smell when I get in my car now. Pepperoni, sausage, green peppers. The smell just stays in your car. I have been working overtime lately, so it was extra pizza smelly. It's just that everything costs too much and I can't afford it all. Plus my job needs gas to happen. And since gas is up as well, my life sucks. I am blowing money constantly on gas, so I really don't have the bandwidth to deal with stupid stuff. And when you know, that's when stupid stuff happens. It's like the universe knows that you're down and decides to give you a good kick in the balls. So, I have three orders in the back. The first house is nice and easy. It was a family order. They are watching some old Disney movie with singing. Whatever. But I got a $20 tip. That is going right into my pocket. No splitting for me. And my boss can shove it up his ass. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. The second house was a little sketchy. But in an interesting way. I'm pretty sure the guy that answered the door was a pimp or something, and I definitely heard some moaning in the background. The guy tipped me $50 and invited me in. If I didn't have another order, maybe I would have said yes. Don't judge me. I have my needs too. But I declined as I had another order to fulfill. $70 in 20 minutes was amazing, and hopefully my good boy choices would reward me even more. Unfortunately, that was not the case. I put the third address in, and it was about 15 miles out. Oh great, it was way out of the way. I stepped on the gas and tried to get this over with. I got to the address, and it was a row of apartments. There was a woman at the top of the stairs, dressed in some skimpy stuff. She was waving me in when she saw my sign. Now that my pizzas were gone, if she wanted some love, I had some time. There's no reason to rush back to the store and fold boxes. I went up the stairs, and the woman was standing in the doorway smiling, barely covered by her lingerie and wearing a jacket over it. I couldn't contain my excitement, really. So I went in the apartment unit, and it was just a single room. Honestly, it was pretty gross, but she was pretty hot. Here's your pizza, I said as I handed her the pizza. She said thank you and gave me a hundred bucks. I was stoked, and I was actually ready to get out of there with my quick 170 bucks. Unfortunately, she had different plans. She stood in the doorway, blocking my exit. She asked me if I wanted to stay longer. Then she removed her top. Am I an idiot? And guess what I did? I'm an idiot, and I wasn't thinking with the right head. I said yes, and she closed the door. This was so great. The perfect end to a great night. So we're all hot and heavy in the middle of something amazing. When suddenly, the door busts open and I catch a nightstick right to the face. So I woke up naked next to my car the next morning. My money was gone and my secret stash in my car of $550 was gone as well. How could they even find my hidden compartment? I have no idea. They even stole my registration. What kind of a sick bastard takes the car registration? Now that it was daylight, I looked around and noticed how out of shape this neighborhood was. What a dump. Have you ever seen the Barbarian? It was kind of like that. You couldn't tell at night, but I think it was abandoned. That was the last time I ever delivered a pizza again. I was delivering some hot pies to all the hungry people of the land. I've been doing it for a few months now, and I've had great success. I was making money, and the tips were mostly good, with a few stiffs here and there. The job is simple. You get the order from the store, bag up all your stuff, put in the address, and go. You get to listen to music, call friends, whatever you want in between. When you get to the location, you either get a tip or not. Most people want to give you a tip, especially now since there are tip requests at every business. So on one particular order, I was delivering to an apartment complex, and the address seemed to be in an area of town that we try to avoid. A lot of drivers had been jumped there, 
and the company refuses to deny service to the area to keep the driver safe. I believe that all humans deserve dignity and respect to get their pizza delivered, regardless of their socio-economic status. It's just that now I'm the driver, and it could be trouble for me. Hopefully not, though. I try to stay positive, though, and get the order done. I show up to the apartment complex and can instantly hear loud music. There's rap music being played from a car with a big group of guys hanging around it. There's also some loud death metal music coming from a window of one of the apartment windows. There were people standing on the stairwells drinking and talking loud. It was like a real party. This isn't really where I wanted to be, but if I could just pass this all by and get the order done, that would be great. I didn't have any money on me, so I felt a little bit better. Most of these people were not even paying attention to me anyways. They were all lost in their own little worlds. As I was walking towards the unit I was delivering to, I heard a strange noise coming from inside. It sounded like someone was being murdered. I am now standing right in front of the door, holding the pizzas, and hearing a gurgling sound coming from inside. Shaking and scared to death, I slowly push the doorbell. A man opens up, his shirt covered in blood. I read his order to him, and he looks at me like nothing is going on and says, Yep, that's me. He tips me $200 and closes the door. I stand there for a second, then go quickly to my car. I do not look at anyone. I just go straight to the car. I get in and head back. I get to the store and quit right on the spot. My life is worth more than this. I'm back in college now and never delivered a pizza again. I was out for a delivery in a small town. There were a bunch of woods everywhere, so it was not uncommon to get a pen delivery in the woods. As long as they prepaid their order and tip, it was all good. Plus the tips in these parties in the woods were pretty awesome as well, and you would know what you're getting into before you even left the store. So naturally, everyone was jumping on these good deals. So when there was one of these orders for 10 pizzas, I jumped on it immediately. It did take a minute to get the order together, but once I got everything in order, I was off to the coordinates for delivery. I put my pen in the GPS and drove over there. The order was a 30 minute drive, so I put some news on while I went over there. Coincidentally, there was a story that gave me the chills, and it was the worst story I could have heard in this current situation. The news reported that there was a body found in the woods tied up to a tree. The body was mutilated and burned. They had to use dental records to identify the person. I turned the news report off and played some music. What a funny coincidence that I heard that story when I'm headed to the woods right now, at night, in the dark, alone. So I should be fine, right? I get to the end of the road and the pin is still a mile away. Oh great. So I park the car and try to zoom in on the GPS to see the roads. I don't see it on the normal map, so I go to satellite view. I see no roads going to the pin, but I do see a trail that goes directly to it. This is not the first time I've had to hike some pizzas for 150 bucks, but I do wish if this was the case they put it in the special instructions for the order. I look at the receipt, and actually they did tell me. I just didn't pay attention. So I open the trunk, and I get my pizza hiker contraption that I created and strap the pizzas on. At this point I'm wearing 10 pizzas comfortably, and head down the trail with my flashlight. The trail was all but quiet except for the sound of frogs everywhere. Some time has passed, and I've made it about half a mile at this point, and I'm making great time. I have earbuds in, and feel safe enough to listen to the Deeper Pockets podcast while I'm killing time. Since I was listening to a podcast and not paying attention, I did not see trouble coming. In the distance, I could see a bonfire lighting up the sky. I'm kind of a former Boy Scout so I always come prepared. I take out my binoculars and take a look to make sure everything looks good. 
Well, I'm glad I did, because it was not good. I saw a bunch of rowdy people dancing around a bonfire. To my horror, there was someone tied up in the tree, centrally located at their party. That was far enough for me. This was a setup, and I wasn't going any further. I immediately took the AirPods out of my ears. I heard a few sets of footsteps crunching leaves behind me. Oh shit. I had a quick release clip on the pizza contraption in case I ran into a bear or something. I released the pizzas and ran directly to my left as my exit was cut off by this group trying to catch me off guard. I heard them hollering at me and ran with all the speed I could muster. I got to a safe distance in the brush and hid for a minute. I could see the group of guys with flashlights looking for me, but I was well hidden. Once they got far enough away, I started heading towards my car. I got there safely and called the police. I gave them the pin coordinates and told them what I saw. Now I'm very proud of this and will tell this story at every bar I will ever go to till the day I die. But I saw a fleet of Blackhawks fly over my car and toward the coordinates. I didn't know what happened until I watched the news though. But the Blackhawks deployed a SWAT team via fast rope to take down this large group. They knew who they were and they had been looking for them for some time. They killed some and took some hostage. They rescued the woman that was tied up. I got a medal from the police department for calling in the situation. However, I did quit the pizza business. This incident has inspired me to join the Navy. I am now a helicopter crew chief at a Navy squadron. Hey, Spooky Center here. Uh, pizza delivery stories. I always like these because I used to be a uh, delivery driver way back in the day. And uh, you always get into some weird situations. The uh, pimp story is true. Um, I did see a house that whatever was going on. And there was some dude at the house and he was trying to invite me in. So pretty weird stuff. So a lot of these stories are from some kind of experience that I've had before. Or was inspired by something that I've heard about. But I've had a relatively safe life. I kind of stay out of trouble. So... First of all, let me say thank you. I have 275 subscribers now, and that's, I think, organic subscribers who actually enjoy the stuff that I'm doing, so I appreciate that for everybody that's listening. Things coming up. We got uh, Texas Haunted Places, Tennessee Haunted Places. Uh, we have a story about Uki uh Japanese urban legend, and more Yandere stories for those that like stuff like that. Uh, we also have some offer up stories and one more Japanese urban legend. So um, you'll see those coming out in the next month or so. If you're new here, like, share, and subscribe. Share the content so that other people can see it. These are all original story ideas. And I'm not an AI bot, I'm an actual person. So. Um, and for those ha who have never heard it, uh, you can always catch my bloopers at the end of these. So, uh, lots of bloopers, um, all the time. So, have a good weekend, and stay spooky. Suddenly, no, not suddenly. I woke up naked next to my car the next morning. Especially now, since there are... Shit. I stand there for a second, then go... Then goes, uh, I was off to, the, I was off to the delivery spot. I was off to the, I was off to the, um, I was off to the court. I had a quick release, but I saw a fleet of black hops, black hops, uh, but the black hops to the black hops, but the black hops, shit.